really nice person. So I think we'll really enjoy hearing from him. And that's Friday evening. The keynote uh, dresses include a really sumptuous buffet. Um, they do cost $40, but, but um, really worth it. So, and then he also has this woodpecker um, wonderland.com. So if you have any woodpecker questions, I encourage you to go on and, and look at that. Should be a lot of fun to see that from him. And then the Saturday keynote speaker, which was is October 22nd, is Dr. Carl Safina. He's a person that I met way back in the day when he was working for Audubon. And he is now um, in charge of the, the Safina Center, which is kind of a big think tank about the human relationships with the natural world. And um, this is gonna be one of the really great talks of the year because he's just a broad thinker, you know, one of these people with the big ideas and, and really brings a lot of intellect to the discussion. And he is the writer of several books. I've read a few of them. I've read Beyond Words, Song of the Blue Ocean and Eye of the Albatross. So um, beautifully written um, books that make you really think in ways that are a bit outside maybe of your box. I just really would encourage those of you who can to come and listen to this man because he's, he's really quite remarkable. Um, we are offering keynote um, seminar talks on Friday and Saturday. These are gonna be recorded by Zoom. If you can't come to the festival, you could still uh, sign up and watch these talks later um, if, you, if you could, um, as well as the keynotes. Those would all be included in the registration because we're going to do them live and by Zoom. And we're thinking that that's a good thing because when people are out doing their birding, you know, with the field trips, they'll still be able to see the talks. But um, Faye Johnson's a young biologist, really interested in fiddler crabs. And I think that will be a great talk. Buddy Powell is a man who has studied manatees his entire life. He started as a teenager in, in Crystal River and worked with Jacques Cousteau back in the day. And so he is completely fascinating and charming man. Right now, the director of the Clearwater Marine Aquarium. Joyce Clean is longtime biologist for uh, the National Wildlife Refuge um, for Crystal River and the Tampa Bay Refuges. And um, Mark McRae, and I don't know if you guys can see this, it's kind of blocked out by the people, you know, everybody's, um, but um, he teaches ornithology at the University of Tampa. And he helps us understand uh, if we're just birders, what it is we have to do to think more scientifically about our bird watching. So that should be really interesting. And, and that's just the morning. So we have Friday afternoon seminars with Adam and Gina. I don't know if you've heard them speak before, but fabulous speakers about shorebirds and then shorttail hawks one of our more interesting and rarer hawks here in Florida. Jerry Jackson, longtime biologist, um, inter, you know, nationally known ornithologist has been studying in Hingis for the last year. And that should be really interesting. And then Jeff Leike and Mark Rochelle, both of whom work for Audubon, talking about two of the, the really interesting species in Florida, least turns and um, Red egret. So that'll be, that finishes up Friday afternoon. And then Saturday morning, Dr. Huber is going to be talking about sharks. He's been studying things like bite pressure. Really interesting, you know, what is it that, that these sharks do? How mm. superbly are they designed to be uh, predators in the world? Kent Follett is a University of Florida long-term biologist who studies Florida alligators and working with the St. Augustine Alligator Farm to this day. And, and um, getting him to stop talking about alligators is the challenge because he just is really enthralled by the animals. He studied alligators all across the, 
the world and crocodilians. Mark Minow, of course, wrote the book on gardening with for Florida butterflies. So, and he is just a, a very interesting and, and great speaker. And then Brandon Bassett is a young biologist working for FWC and he does manatee rescue and also autopsies. What killed them and, and what can we do to help manatees set? Um, and in the afternoon, um, we've got um, Charlie Fisher, I guess this is supposed, this should have been Saturday afternoon. I'm sorry, you guys. Um, Charlie is gonna be talking about eBird and, and different citizen science projects and um, what they've meant to him, the Breeding Bird Survey, the Breeding Bird Atlas and, and so on. Um, Beth Forey is a professor at Eckerd College and her topic is gonna be black skimmers, which she's been studying along the west coast of Florida where they're nesting, particularly in Pinellas County, where so many people use the beaches. Zachary Holmes is a young biologist actually studying right now at the University of Florida, but he's a, a wealth of enthusiasm and knowledge about the kestrels. And then Steve Backus is just an amazing man. He has landscaped his yard and it is in Sefner in the middle of a lot of other housing and yet uh, hummingbirds come and stay with him over the winter. He can tell you how to have hummingbirds in your yard. So our field trips are pretty exciting. We're actually going to six counties in the region with the best habitats, with the best bird biologists and the property managers and agency staff. And they're gonna be able to tell us about the habitat and how they manage it and where the birds are. And it's all of the, trips I think are really exciting. Um, starting, as I said, four of the trips are already sold out. So I'm not telling you about any of the ones that are sold out, but we only have four spots left in the on the bus trip. And this is one of these trans Florida, let's go look for the specialties with Dave and Jim, two of the best birders. I know, I know some of you know them, just so much fun to be with. Um, and then we've got some really other great, great trips. Um, these are the Lower Green Swamp is 12,000 acres. It's the former Cone Ranch in Northeast Hillsborough County, quite remarkable. And then across the Crossbar and Albar Ranch are in Pasco County. And they're a well field of, that's actually owned by Pinellas County but um, manage for the water and the wildlife. And then of course, Dan Laramore is the biologist at Honeymoon Island State Park in Pinellas County. Absolutely beautiful place um, to visit and very, very birdy in the fall. And then um, Kristen Rare is offering us a trip in the Florida Aquarium. It's actually costs less to do this trip than going to the aquarium. And um, she's going to be uh, doing interpretation in the in the estuary portion of the aquarium where the birds are, and then um, people will have the ability to wander around the aquarium for the as long as they want the rest of the day. And then Faye is going to take talk. She's having given the talk on fiddler crabs. She's going to take us down to the shoreline and look at them and talk about it there. And then. Um, I mean, the field trips go on and on. Blackwater Creek is going to be a lot of fun, although I hear it's very wet, so people should be wearing boots, maybe even. Um, going to Fort DeSoto on Saturday and Sunday, just spectacular. And um, Dan Savarkul and Nathan going to Gibbons Preserve, that's not really a bird trip. It's an old growth forest uh, habitat trip and trees. Just beautiful place right on the on the Alafaya River bank. Um, Circle B Bar, those of you who have been there will know that it's just amazing. And um, John Lampkin and Mark Minow um, and, and Rob are going to a place that's a restoration site, but where they see so many different kinds of butterflies. And being in the field with, with those guys is a lot of fun. 
because they get so enthusiastic. And they'll be talking about butterflies. They'll be talking about dragonflies, Stan Crow, and um, um, uh, Tom Reese are the ones that did the restoration pro project at Newman Branch. So they will really be enthusiastic. That's a canoe trip. Um, if you know Rainier, you may. He is a professional photographer and he's gonna be offering a workshop at Circle B Bar. Raul Bouton is a professional um, ornithologist working for Mosaic and he's gonna take people out and find the birds on the re reclaimed habitats. That's gonna be a very good trip too. Jean Duby, of course, uh, is president of Sarasota Audubon and she's gonna be helping people find birds at the celery fields. Teresia Uplands is a restoration project that's really fun. And um, also Randy Reynolds is taking a kayak trip through the Teresia Preserve. I did that trip last year. It started at up, upstream in Frog Creek, so freshwater habitat. And then we went through the freshwater salt water zone. And then we were in the mangrove under tunnels of mangroves. Wow, and that was great. And one of the best places to go to is Egmont Key National Wildlife Refuge, just spectacular. And Dave and, and Barb Howard are the, um, the friends of the refuge um, president and, and volunteer. And Joyce Clean is the refuge biologist. So then the other thing that's going on on Friday and Saturday only is the Nature Expo. If you need binoculars, this is the time to get them. We've got three binoculars companies coming, Land, Sea, and, and Sky, plus Swarski, and Jeff Bouton with um, Kawa are going to be there. Clay Taylor with Swarski. They'll be able, you'll be able to hold them, feel them, you know, focus, see what works, and uh, great chance to by binoculars. Plus nature art is gonna be there. Peter Gerbert is gonna be showing his nature art and also um, Mr. Moore, Matt Moore. So just beautiful opportunity to buy things. Um, Wild Birds Unlimited, the Native Plant Nursery, Little Red Wagon, the Friends of the Tampa Bay Refuges sell a lot. And then if you want to plan a trip, um, Holbrook's gonna be there. David Simpson's gonna be talking about um, where you can bird with him, great birder, nature photography, birding, Caribbean, uh, carefree birding. I mean, this is really great. And of course, I don't know if you can see it over here. This is, this is a Texas birding festival that's gonna be in the spring. And then we've got a lot of different booths. People will be having informational booths. We're gonna actually have the um, manatee rescue truck it's gonna be on site. So the whole thing is really great. And we have the grand finale before Carl Savina's keynote, we'll be having a silent auction. So that's the plan for the festival. And um, you know, I hope some of you will come if you know people that you think would like to come. You know, one of the things I always say what's really sad is when you have somebody that says, in November, oh, I would have liked to go to that. <laughs> Let's tell them so they can go to it. We've got room for people. Um, we're excited about it. Our festival's growing. And uh, it, do you, does anybody have any questions? So you can put your questions in the chat or you can unmute yourself at this time. And Susan is back. So if there's questions, um you she will or i can read them so uh, we do have a question from susan will the silent auction be live and online or just live it's going to be there and you you know the idea is you buy it and you take it home and i don't have to ship it to you <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> set by saturday night i'll be you know happy so, um, but ready to have the work done. Okay, and see if we have any other questions. There's gonna be, and, and the silent auction, I, I can tell you, it's gonna include some really 
handsome artwork and a number of other things. So there's gonna be a balance between stuff that should be a, a lot of money and stuff that isn't, but um, it's, it's always an opportunity to buy stuff as a bargain. You know, you can really get some good stuff and not pay a lot of money for it, so. And it goes to Camp Audubon? No, it's, it supports the Florida Birding and Nature Festival. Okay. which is its own, I should have said that, it's that we're, we, um, I'm president of the Florida Birding and Nature Festival. We, we're a nonprofit Florida corporation um, registered with the IRS and our goal is to run a festival. And the idea of running the festival is to make clear to the local politicians and people in the community that ecotourism is important and, it, and it's one of the reasons why we should protect our habitats in the area. Very good. Actually, I would like to say if there's anybody who's looking for binoculars, what a great way to do it because I bought my last pair at a, you know, at a festival and you get to try the different types. You get to look at the different vendors. It's really a nice way to pick out binoculars versus just kind of ordering online from somebody and you're kind of hoping that you like what you get. So um, that I think is a really good thing. We kind of always hope that people have those vendors so that we can recommend them. Yeah. So let's see Landon, if they're having them. Lansing and Sky is coming from Houston. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good that they're coming. Mm -hmm. Right, and Kawa, as well as uh, Swarovski. It's a big deal to have them come. And of course, um, they're sending, Swarovski's, Clay Taylor's gonna be here. He's really a super birder and such a nice man and so patient with everybody when they're trying to figure out what kind of binoculars they want. Of course, those are really high end. So you should be very, very happy with them. And then um, Jeff Booten, one of our best Florida birders. In fact, he told me he was on his way, I think, um, to, to Europe. He was going to be in Europe right now um, because there was a, a birding event there. So yeah, it's good. Great. Um, it, where's the location? I know it was in a college before. Right, so this now is um, Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission has something called the Youth Conservation Center. It's in Apollo Beach South, if you're familiar with the Tampa Electric's Manatee Viewing Center. It's on Dickman Road, just south of the Manatee Viewing Center. So it's in Apollo Beach. Apollo Beach is located on the kind of the middle actually of uh, Hillsborough Bay, but on the um, east side of, of uh, uh, Hillsborough County, I should say, the east side of Hillsborough Bay. And it's um, not that far from Manatee County, um, southeast of Tampa. Great. Anyone else have anything to ask? Well, one fellow said he, he was leaving now to go register. <laughs> yeah. Good, I, I really, you know, I encourage every, I mean, the field trips, every one of those field trips is going to be a good time. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's what we hear from our people who have participated before. And, um, you know, I just, we just have a lot of fun at this festival. It's good. Okay, well, thank you so much for sharing about it. And I hope some of uh, the audience does register. I'm going to be there. Or part of it, at least. Yeah. So, um, uh, Anne, would you like to mention um, Florida Ornithological Society's meeting? Sure, sure, I would. Um, let's see. Let me stop this share. Um, so, I'm also president of the Florida Ornithological Society. We are actually going to have a really dynamic meeting. Um, at the beginning of October. We're doing it in conjunction with the Raptor Research Foundation, which is meeting with us in Fort Lauderdale 
we have to research um, people will be coming. I think they have over 200 people registered, but they're coming in from Australia and Europe and India and all, literally all of South America, as well as you know the United States and Canada. So they're coming in from all over the world to talk about raptors. There's going to be a great big Kara Kara workshop, um, all kinds of really intensive raptor stuff. And that'll be mostly during the week. And then on the weekend becomes sort of the Florida Ornithological Society uh, opportunity. Our people will be coming in mostly starting on Friday. We're gonna join Raptor, Re we're gonna have our board meeting on Friday afternoon and then join Raptor Research Banquet that night and then have field trips on Saturday morning and Sunday morning. And then in, on Saturday afternoon, we're gonna have a lunch at the hotel where it, the whole thing is at the Embassy Suites, Fort Lauderdale. And um, really, I'm, I'm actually, even this distance away from it, kind of excited about the lunch. It's make your own fajitas. Oh, it's gonna be great. And then um, in the afternoon, we've got a student sec session where students will be talking about their research and then uh, a session with professional long time biologists talking about um, a whole series of really interesting studies that they've been working on. And that includes um, Ricardo Zambrano, who's been, he's a longtime um, FWC biologist for South Florida. And he's gonna talk about roseate terns, which is one of, I think one of our, we have so many beautiful birds in Florida, you can't say one of the most, but certainly a very distinctive and handsome creature. And then um, let's see, um, Janelle Brush is gonna talk about uh, the, the 45 years, 45 years FWC's studies of bald eagles in the state of Florida. So that's gonna be very interesting because of course, during that time frame, bald eagles have made a huge recovery and are now no longer listed by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service as an endangered or even threatened animal, still protected by the Eagle Protection Act. But, but I think that that is going to be very great. And then, then um, uh, let's see, um, there's going to be a, a presentation by Jeff Booten about uh, Hawk Watch. Hawk Watch, and we're going to have a field trip on Saturday, Sunday. One of our field trips is going to be down to Hawk Watch. The Hawk Watch has been studying um, raptor flyovers on Curry Hammock State Park for you know 40 years or so. And the most, the day that the most peregrines fly over is October 10th. And October 9th is when we're going to be there for our field trip. They have had days when 1,500 peregrine falcons flew by that site and were counted by Hawk Watch, not to mention all the other hawks that are flying south. So I'm pretty excited, excited about that. Steve Nesbitt is gonna be talking about the Whooping Crane Project for Central Florida. What was the thinking? How did it happen? What happened and where is it now? So I think that that's a pretty, pretty great, um, pretty great topic. And um, let's see, Tabitha Whalen is coming to talk about the um, black um, capped kestrel. No, um, is that right? Not kestrel. I'm getting this wrong. I'm sorry. I'm having a little brain thing. Um, the the seabird, the black capped petrel. Uh, petrel. Thank you. <laughs> and the work that her organization is doing in Haiti to help in Haiti talk about uphill, but um, to protect that bird. So, so those are the topics that are going to be discussed in the afternoon. Then later at the banquet, we've got three speakers. I mean, we're packing so much into this evening. I'm a little breathless from even thinking about it, but um, the there's going to be a review and update on the second Florida Breeding Bird Atlas that the Ornithological Society is publishing with the University of South Florida. 
um, as an online publication. And we're getting really close to having it be there. Um, there will be parts of it that will be ready. I'm, you know, it's, it's a very ambitious project, about 200 species of birds nest breed in Florida. So those are the, the focus of this study. And um, we'll be, there'll be a presentation about where we are with that. And then FOS, Florida Ornithological Society is celebrating its 50th year, 1972. Started in, um, since 1972, started in 1972 in Lakeland. And so we're gonna be uh, talking about this. University of South Florida librarian archivist um, Andy Hoos is going to be reviewing the archives and what he's learned about 50 years of the Florida Ornithological Society. So I'm very excited to hear what conclusions he's got. And then um, Jim Cush Cushlin, who you may know, was a long-term biologist in Florida and actually internationally, an international heron expert. He wrote the herons of the world and the herons of the of North America, for instance, um, co-authored those. Um, but he and his wife, Kirsten Hines, are gonna talk about their book that they have just published, which is the 75th uh, anniversary, 75 years of Everglades National Park. So really an incredible um, series of things going on with FOS and I'm very excited about all of that too. So October is going to be a busy month for all of us. I was just, that sounds you know. Um, Anne, can, can you explain the difference in focus of FOS and Audubon? Well, actually FOS is an offshoot of Audubon, just uh, the Florida Audubon Society, just like the Save the Manatee Club is is you know, started by the Florida Ornithological Society as um, an opportunity for bird watchers, bird lovers, bird enthusiasts, and bird scientists to get together and just talk and share bird information. And that's really what it, continue, it is today. So um, the idea is that all of us who are interested in birds, um, Let's get together and talk about it. The, you know, as a person who worked for um, National Audubon and then Audubon Florida for a long time, you know, I've found that participation in the Florida Ornithological Society is a great opportunity to learn what the scientists are learning. And also the scientists are listening to what we know. You know, bird, birds watching is one of these things that everybody's on some kind of a scale, you know, where we know stuff, but there's so much more to learn. And um, it's just a chance to, to you know, get a leg up and, and learn from people who, who know more than you and, and um, people who are watching birds. And that's what the bird scientists are interested in too, because they know that all these people who are out bird watching are seeing things that um, they have not seen and they want to hear about it. They want to know what have we seen when we're out bird watching because we learn together so much. Birds are interesting and it's fun to talk birds. You guys have been talking birds this whole evening and it's been fascinating. And um, you know, is that's what FOS is. It's it's trying to create an overlap where the bird scientists and the bird lovers, bird watchers, can get together and talk birds and learn more. That's what it's all about. Okay. Thank you. So if you aren't a member, you should join. <laughs> it's twenty five dollars. It's not much. Um, benefits of joining, um, the, there is a um, peer-reviewed publication, the Florida Field Naturalist, which publishes items of interest and um, actually anybody can submit articles. Um, they, are, they will be scientifically reviewed and, and we publish that once a quarter. 
so four times a year. Then there's uh, the snail kite newsletter. If you go on fosbirds.org, you can read the newsletter and all that. Um, then we have a, a Florida Records Committee um, that reviews sightings of birds in Florida and determines should we add that as a species to the list of birds that, that live in our state. So we keep the Florida birding checklist. Um, there's um, three different uh, types of um, grants that you can apply for. So we've got small grants that are available and uh, I would encourage, you know, Orange Audubon to look at what you're doing and what you could, you know, get some money from FOS for. for. Um, so there's a conservation committee. The work of the conservation committee right now is, is concentrated on uh, writing position statements that leaders in different parts of the state can take and present to um, support their arguments. For instance, Deborah, you were just talking about trying to protect, you know, part of part of the state park there. One of the position statements has to do with the importance of wildlife corridors. So, you know, whether that would the the idea of the position statements is they're short statements, scientifically based, with the backup citations right there that are written in a way that um, fairly unsophisticated um, leaders, <laughs> the leaders in our country who have a short attention span can read this and say, oh, now I understand why this is important to do. So, um, you know, scientifically based, clearly written, no, no big science jargon, but um, trying to affect, make a difference by providing the science as to why this or that is important. So we're in the process of writing a number more of those. So that's something the conservation committee is working on. So for instance, so those are some of the things. Well, um, Young Birders Club, we are supporting the Young Birders Club by being the um, kind of the umbrella so that people who want to become young birders, where they can make their do donation to our 501c3 at Foreign Ornithological Society, we'll keep track of the money. And then, you know, they're a committee really of the Florida Ornithological Society. So it's, an, they're under our wing until they're ready to take flight <laughs> for the young birders. So um, there are a number of things that we're working on. We're pretty excited about a lot of it. That's great. Uh, yeah, we have a Young Birders Club going. Uh, uh, Kathy and Susan have uh, taken off on that, and then they have associated with the the network through mm -hmm. FOS. Yeah, we've been we've been meeting monthly, and now we have Young Birders on the advisory committee, which is making it go really good. And they almost have their logo done, and it's going to look great. I saw it. I saw it. It looks like it's done. Yeah. Okay. Jimmy sent it to me, and it's gorgeous. Isn't it great? So we're very excited, and you know, we've just started a monthly Zoom program with speakers for them, and we're going to have our first joint field trip in November at Orlando Wellens Park. So that's something that we hope that some young birders from around the state might be able to come to. Do you see that on my, yeah. my screen, um, Florida Ornithological Society? So there's lots of stuff here. Oh, there's yeah. the position statements. Okay. That's yeah. great. And all the publications and awards and research awards. We do we do have a number of special publications and um gonna be taking a number of them with me when I go to Fort Lauderdale to sell. So we're gonna, you know, we've got a number of those. The, the Breeding Bird Atlas that we're working on right now will be an online publication, but um, we expect it to actually be a physical publication at some point. But when it is, it's going to be 900 pages. So, because we have, 
you know, 200 breeding birds or so in Florida and each one is getting four pages. So. Wow. Because we're publishing the maps where they breed. That's the thing of the atlas. Where are they? It's a, it's a place-based report. It's not really a population information, although there, some of the writers are putting that in their species accounts. It's where are they nesting now in comparison to the breeding bird, the first breeding bird atlas. And so we should be able to show difference in, in the ranges. I think that's really important right now with so many changes going on in Florida due to things like climate, you know, um, temperature relation situations, but also huge development pressure. So you're going to have the old maps also on the atlas. The the old maps and the new maps are are it, there's a comparison map. Oh, nice. Oh. Um, yeah, it's nice. It's really nice. So anyway, okay. any more questions about FOS or the festival? I think you covered it. Thank you so Thank much, you. Anne. Thank you. And I'm going to see you at both of them. So I'm looking forward to seeing you. <laughs> good, 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 good. Okay, thanks everybody for coming. Thank you. I see we have Mike here from the UK. Thank you for being <laughs> up late to join our program. We appreciate it. Where are you, Mike? Where is um, he? I'm in the I'm in the UK. Yeah, but that's a big place. Uh, just north of Cambridge. Oh, okay. So I, it's uh, it's it's uh, just coming up to one o'clock in the morning. Oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's a nice well, I, I, just... I, I went on a really nice trip to Scotland in July. Oh, nice. Oh, it was beautiful. Hope you didn't you get bitten by the midges. A... No, didn't. Um, you guys were having the heat wave and we weren't. Yeah, it was so. very hot here, yeah. So yeah. It's uh it's it's interesting your uh, your event that you're you're doing because we have something quite similar over here, um, which was uh, it was called Bird Fair, um, and then it got changed to the Global Bird Watching Fair this year. So, uh, so yeah, so similar kind of event, but nice to nice to hear that you've got field trips and all that planned. And it's just so much fun to get out and go see what we see. Indeed, yeah. Hide and seek with the birds. Yeah. They hide and we seek. <laughs> <laughs> That's right.